pass your awareness down the body, starting at the head. Let me know if you find anything. Right shoulder feels tingling heaviness. Mm -hmm. And left forearm, kind of as if something is holding on to the left forearm wrist area. Very good. What else do you notice? The right shoulder is fluttering. Feels as if it's a loop, a ring. Tell me about that loop or that ring. It's brown doll in color. Feels kind of like a cufflink around my left wrist. As you connect with that energy there in the wrist, as you connect very deeply with that energy, what do you imagine that ring is doing around the wrist? What is its purpose? It's to help bring energy in. Don't feel it has a consciousness. It's like a cufflink, a bracer to help bring energy in. It's just dull. It's shined up. Let's do this. Let's give this cufflink some extra shine and sparkle. What color would you like to use to infuse this cufflink? Gold. Mm-hmm. Bright gold. Very good. I'm going to call forward all of the beautiful angels and guides and higher selves that are working with us today. And we're going to begin to channel in a beautiful, bright, golden energy right into that cuff link, making it nice and bright, giving it strength, allowing the flow of energy to move even more easily and effortlessly through this device that's there in the wrist. I want you to feel that energy become stronger and stronger, bringing that energy down into the hands. Tell me how that feels as that energy flows in. Feels like it's flowing better. The cufflink is bright yellow, bright gold now. But it feels like it is stopping, running into a block at the right shoulder. So let's focus on that right shoulder for just a moment. Just tuning in to that right shoulder and that blockage there in the shoulder, connecting very deeply. As you connect with that energy there, what do you imagine is creating that block? Don't want to go. Mm -hmm. This energy, this energy there that doesn't want to go, is this energy male or female? Male. Mm -hmm. And does this energy have a name that we can call it? Zed. Zed, very good. Zed, how old are you? 30. Zed, I want you to think back to that very last day that you had a life, that you had a human body. Thinking back to that very last day, Zed, I want you to see if you can recall What happened to you on that very last day caused you to lose your body? What do you remember? (laughs) 
fell off a horse, landing on my right shoulder. There was a rock there. It, it killed me. Mm -hmm. I uh, suddenly wasn't in my body anymore. Tell me what happened as you came out of your body. What did you do next, Sid? Where did you go? I didn't know where to go. Tell me when it was that you found Tony. How long have you been there attached with him? How old was he? Not very long. you just been there with him recently? Yes. What was it, Zed, that allowed you to attach to his energy field? He had a bright light. I thought he could help me. Very good. And so, Zed, what sort of issues have you been causing for him during the brief time that you've been there? Tightness in the shoulder area. I didn't want to, but I'd been blocking his energy flow. I just wanted to let him know I was there. Very good. Well, said we're going to help you. We're going to help you get home today. But first, I want to help you with a little bit of healing. So I'm going to call forward Archangel Michael, Archangel Raphael, and the beautiful angels that are here to assist. And I'm going to have them begin to channel in some beautiful white light right there into that right shoulder area where you fell off that horse and received the most damage. And that energy is going to begin to repair any damage caused by that accident. And the angels are going to pull that energy all the way through your body, activating that divine spark of light and helping you with any healing that you need. Zed, let me know how that feels for you. It's tingling. Open it up. Feels shining brighter now. Very good. And Zed, I want you to look around and see if you notice that bright white light of source. Tell me if you see it. I see. Uh, I see. guess it was there all along. Yes. Tell me if you notice who's waiting there for you today. My grandfather. Tell me what he says to you. Come, come with us. We've been waiting for you. Very good, Sid. Are you ready to go be with your grandfather again and go home? Uh, absolutely. Very good. I'm going to have Archangel Michael assist you with releasing all of your energy. I want you to begin to pull all of your energy out of Tony's shoulder. Michael is going to assist with the net of light, just pulling all of your energy up and out, completely up and out of the body. Said, I want you to tell me when you have all of your energy completely disconnected. It's done. Beautiful. Said, is there anything that you'd like to say to Tony before you go home? I'm sorry I caused those issues. I knew you could help me. Thank you. Very good. Tony, anything that you'd like to say to Zed before he goes? It's okay. I love you. Have fun. 
Very good. Zed, we're going to send you back into the light, back home to source with so much light and so much love. And Tony, let's begin to bring in a healing energy for that shoulder. What color would you like to use? Blood and gold. Beautiful. So let's begin to all channel in all the guides and angels, that beautiful golden energy right there into the right shoulder making sure that we spread that energy out to all areas where Zed was attached there in the shoulder, possibly even connected into the neck area where you've been feeling those sensations. Just feel that energy flow in and ask Michael to disconnect any cords or connections between Tony and Zed, cleaning up any residual energies. Tell me how that feels. Mm. very freeing I feel the energy flowing again very good let's check back with the wrist now has that opened up that that energy flow back to those wrists yeah the whole ring circle is shining brightly now. Mm. Kind of golden. Flowing through the heart. Up through the left and out through the right. Beautiful. Looks good. Looks good. Tell me a little bit more about this ring. Is this something that you've always had, or is this something that's been placed on recently? It's been activated more recently. It'll keep growing stronger. Energy flows through the left and out through the right in a circle from the heart space. It's how we utilize energy for healing. Tell it's me important. more about that. Tell me more about how that energy, how we utilize that for healing. We can send energy wherever we'd like. You can place your hands on the object that needs healing, but is not necessary. All you need to do is send energy It's really powerful within that heart space of the person utilizing the energy. But time and space does not matter. You can send it wherever you need to. So when we're working with these energies that come from our hands, should we be focusing on the heart and connecting into the heart to send those energies? Or tell me a little bit more about how that works. Yes. The heart is part of the flow maybe the most important part of the flow. It's like a center point of a vortex. See the image of uh, a magnetic spin top. The heart is the center point on that flow. So it's really important to maintain that flow and remove the blockages so the field can spin like a kid's spin top, a toy. Is what they're showing me. Mm. That sits and spins on the access point 
which is the heart. When we bring energy up from Gaia and we bring energy from source that is all connected and flows and comes through the heart creating that vortex it's not the right word for it the magnetic field with the heart as the center point, sending it outward, flows left to right. It is helpful to wear some kind of copper I get on the left wrist to help bring in energy. You could use crystals to help keep from any energies that you do not want in your field. Use stones. Doesn't matter which stones. Tiger's eye works. Hematite works. Tourmaline. Black onyx works. They are helpful because they maintain a high frequency and need to be cleansed. Often, but anything you set an intention in will work to help keep that energy from getting in the flow that you do not want. Very good. So now that this ring has been cleansed and activated, what will Tony begin to notice? Will he feel any new sensations or more energy? What will he notice? He thinks it's funny because he can start throwing energy balls. <laughs> he will notice the tingling in his arms and across his shoulders and through the heart space knowing that is becoming activated over time you might see the palms start lighting up but much more work needs done for this to occur but <laughs> he can send out love arrows faster as energy balls. He thinks it's funny. Very good. And is there anything else that he needs to know to help him progress with using this energy a little bit quicker? Anything he needs to be focusing on or working on? Just practice. Imagination is the key. You can imagine seeing that energy working and being sent out. It helps with intention to send it faster, better, focused intention. He will feel it. Imagination and intention is very important. Very good. And so one of his questions was that he had been um, experiencing some tingling sensations um, in the right shoulder, traveling down the right arm. 
and occasionally some tightness in the right shoulder and the neck. Just want to double check and make sure that that was Zed that we helped to release. Is that all created by his energy? Or is anything else going on in that right shoulder that we need to look at? No, Zed was placed there to bring, to help get him home, but also bring attention to that flow of energy. It is clear he was causing, it was causing tightness and tension. It will be God now. The only thing that he will feel is the tingling activation of that energy flow, which is good. It will prompt him to practice and imagine so they become more active. Beautiful. Very good. So let's do another scan of the body, just scanning through the body. And let me know if there are any additional areas of the body that you'd like to take a look at now. Just look at the right hip. Very good. He said he's experiencing a clicking sensation in that right hip area. What's going on there? It is being healed. It's a loose feeling that he has in there. You can feel the energy traveling down his right foot and leg. There is nothing there that needs removed it is healing and will continue to heal can we bring in some energy to assist with that healing process today we'll use white light and when he he notices sensations or pain there he can focus white light into the area to assist with healing. Very good. And would it also help to place his hands in that area as well and focus that energy? Mm, Absolutely. Would be most beneficial. Very good. And while we're taking a look at the body, he's been experiencing some skin irritations like burn wounds on his neck and he's wondering if that was caused from an incident where he had some battery acid spilled on the back of his neck from a battery pack what can you tell us about what's going on in that area in this physical it appeared as the burn from battery acid we are showing him a parallel life where he was hung for being a white witch healer. You see a big oak tree, see the body in that life hanging there. They did that to warn any good witches, healers, and scare them to keep them from practicing their craft of healing people. Now that he's seen this, it will start to heal. Very good. Let's do a little healing around that lifetime. And I want you to see yourself hanging there in that tree. We're going to bring in that beautiful white light of source that can heal anything and everything. We're going to flow that down, starting at the crown, 
bringing that energy all the way down through the head and the face and flowing it right there into that neck where you've been hung from that tree. And as that white light begins to flow throughout your body, it begins to transform your body into that bright white light, healing any damage and releasing you from that tree, restoring you back to that perfect physical body that you had. NASA energy flows into that lifetime, transforming that scene and healing that damage. We're going to bring that beautiful energy back into your neck in this life, allowing that energy to flow throughout your head, neck, and face. Just releasing any of that energy, transmuting any of that energy connected to that lifetime. Tell me how that feels or what you notice now. I feel the white light going all over the body, hitting the different areas that need healed, including the neck, the neck and the spine straightened more robust now. Mm. Very good. And so will he continue to have those wounds appear on his neck? Or is that, will that be taken care of in today's session? That will be cleared. No longer needs to experience it anymore. We help that aspect of his soul sees him jumping off the tree and flying into source light. Beautiful. Very good. Very good. And one additional issue that he wanted to take a deeper look at, he experiences snoring at night and he's wanting to understand more about why that is and how he can heal that. What does he need to know? It's been caused by stress and trauma in this life. This incarnation. As he realizes he is not in this stress anymore. It will ease. Some of it is caused by the smoking of cigars. Causes throat swelling. Once he realizes that he does not have the stress that it started anymore, all things will disappear. His wife, who complains about his snoring, There is lessons there for her that she only can see. Any additional information you can give us on those lessons? (laughs) Anything she needs to know? She would appreciate it, (laughs) but it is her journey It's like a signpost, a direction she has to take because seems keeps her up. She remains frustrated because she's tired. She will see it. It's not his fault either that she stays up. It's not completely the snoring that causes this. She just blames it on that. We will show her to help. This will correct soon. Very good. And let's do a little healing work. 
around this issue, just helping it in any way that we can today. And let's bring that beautiful white light and we're going to bring it into the throat and down into the lungs, asking all of the guides and angels to begin to channel that beautiful energy into that throat, just healing that throat, expanding that throat from any any damage that is received from the, the cigars, bringing it down into the lungs, just visualizing, seeing those lungs become nice and bright, expanding that energy out so that you can bring more air, more oxygen into the body, feel that energy soothing and coating the throat area and the lungs and the chest. Just expand that energy out with the intention of releasing any of that stress and trauma that the body has been holding. Almost like this beautiful white energy has its very own consciousness and knows exactly where to find that stress, that trauma within the body. And as that white light connects with that stress and trauma, it begins to transform it into ease and into balance, bringing that energy into perfect alignment, releasing any cellular memory that the body has been holding on to traumas and experiences in this lifetime, even in past lives that we're ready to release, cleansing all of the cells, making them nice and bright and full of light. As that energy flows through the body, tell me what you feel or what you notice. I do feel the throat easing. Air moves better through the nasal passage. Feels good. Very good. And would it be helpful for him to continue to focus that white light in those areas of the body? Yes, absolutely. Wonderful. Anything else in the body? that we need to take a look at today. Tell me if you find anything. Everything seems very brightly shining. Very good. And I'm going to ask the guides and angels and higher self that are here with us today to also check Tony's aura. And as we move through the session, if there's any healing to that auric field or strengthening, if we can bring that energy in for him as well. I want you now to bring your attention back to that garden, that beautiful garden with all of those flowers, the trees and the plants. And you notice that there is a tunnel of time that stretches out before you. It's a bridge through time, if you will. And that bridge, that tunnel of time will take you to that other place that you need to see today. As I count backwards from three to one, you will be there. Three, selecting that lifetime and traveling there now. Two, almost there. And one, be there now. Tell me the first things that you notice or the first things that stand out to you in this place. Colors are very intense. See a very, very deep, dark blue sky, but it's mixed with orange as well. What else do you notice? 
trees off to my left. Looks like the sun's behind them. I believe it's uh, dusk, getting dark. And in this place, do you feel as though you have a body? Yes. Do you feel male or female? Male. How old do you feel in this place? Does a number come to mind? Mid-twenties, I'm getting young, young. Mm -hmm. Seems like age doesn't make a difference. Mid-twenties is my look, but much older than that. Very good. And take a moment and focus in on yourself. Tell me a little bit more about what you look like and what you're wearing on your body. Blue space shoe. Again. I believe it's a space suit or a suit, but blue. It's blue. Mm -hmm. It's pretty sleek. It's kind of dark. Scan up the body and tell me what your head looks like, what your hair looks like, what color it is. Dark hair. It's long. Where am I here? Where am I at? Mm -hmm. What about your facial features? Do they look like normal human features? Do they look, do they look different? They're similar to what they are. In the human form. Mm -hmm. Very similar. Very good. And as you scan down the body and you look at your hands, do you notice if you're holding anything in your hands? Not holding anything right now. The suit does have kind of like a belt that has different technical tools on it. As you focus into that belt a little more deeply, tell me about those technical tools. What, what are they used for? What is their purpose? There is a lifesaver for defense if needed. Measurement devices there's so many there. Don't know what they're for. Tell me about that lightsaber. If you were to use it to defend yourself, who might you use it on? Don't use it often, but last resort, if we couldn't influence it any other way and it come down to that, You would use it on anything really that was intent on causing harm. And if we couldn't use thought form to reverse their trajectory, we would use it to stop the vehicle from causing harm to us or others. Very good, very good. So I want you to bring your attention back to the scene around you with the beautiful colors, the beautiful sky. As you bring your attention back to what is around you, tell me what else you notice. What else stands out to you in this place? Why am I seeing this again? So. What do you so. see? A small craft. 
I'm outside the craft. I feel like I'm observing over something, watching something, something that's happening down in the valley. It appears to be Earth-like. It's really dark blue. Mm. Does it feel like you're on Earth or does it feel like you're on another planet? I feel like I'm on another planet. Different colors. Really dark blue. Even though the light is getting... Appears to be going in tonight. There's goldish lights down in the valley. This place, it looks like camps, small camps in the valley. We were up on the hill just observing. What is it that you feel like you're observing with these camps in the valley? What are you looking for? We, anything that should not be there, we protect and assist. I believe we're just making sure that those camps, we offer protection. They don't know that we are. We're just observing from afar. Who is it that lives in these camps that you're protecting? Getting other humans. And do you feel it, like they're, they're the same as you or are they different than what you are? They are the same. I am just a higher dimensional aspect. I, because my ship is behind me. It's, it's pa parallel. They're the same. Mm -hmm. Don't know. I feel like it's Earth. But the colors are changing or changed. More intense colors. Maybe those camps are in the new earth. It's a community. Mm. Allow yourself to expand your knowing out just a little further. Tell me, does this feel like a future version of Earth? Or does this feel like it's another place, different from Earth? Future version of Earth. Tell me more about that. What do you see in this future version of Earth? Well, the colors have gotten different, more intense. You get a sense that those camps is a community of people that gathered together in this valley. There's no cities around that I can see. It seems like a rustic camp town, village, because I see the fires from the camp scattered through the trees. So tell me more about your role as you're there watching over this camp. Is this something that you do on a regular basis? Do you just check in occasionally? How does that work for you?
Yes. We have always done this. Observe. Protect. Guide at times. But we cannot infringe on the free will of the people that we are observing. So we do it from afar. We have done this in many places. Seems as if Earth is our major focus right now. Things are things are changing on Earth and getting better. Tell me more about that. How are they changing and getting better? If you shift your focus from what they are trying to portray it as being awful and terrible, you will see the changes that are occurring and happening and how beautifully divine it is. It's all progressing nicely. Different beings want to shift the focus of people, humans, so that this doesn't occur. The more that they can divert your attention and focus, the slower raising of vibration is, the slower the earth progresses. The earth is raising vibration and everyone raises in vibration but focusing on the negative aspects of things going on slow that increase in frequency very good. And so as you look at this future version of Earth, tell me a little bit more about what life will be like. It'll be beautiful. But to some, it will appear as if we were going back in time. To some, but really getting back to simple things is how it is supposed to be. These simple things are way more technologically advanced you don't need devices to communicate or elaborate machines to heal even power is simple we have been led to believe that you need complicated devices for this to occur. It's not true. Everything can be run using thought and intention and living in the heart space and power can be utilized from the ethers of the earth in this realm. Not just the ethers of earth, but any place. So it will look very simple, but yet way more advanced 
Beautiful. Tell me a little bit more about yourself. Now you're there on that hill and you're watching over the humans, making sure that they're safe. Tell me more about who you are and where you come from. The star system you would refer to as Pallades is where we have come from. We had helped to seed earth and we are very interested and want to make sure that humans ascend earth ascends basically increase in frequency as our planets did in that system. So we are here to help and make sure, ensure that that happens, doing what we can. Very good. And so as we're moving through this shift in consciousness, what is the most important thing that you can share with us to help us get in that positive mindset and focus on the right things to help us move through this shift in a much faster way? Anything you set your intention on manifest into this reality. So if you are continually focusing on things that you view as negative, that is what will occur. You must shift your focus to things that you want to see. The saying, be the change you want to see, really applies here. So, the more humans focus on being that change by shifting their intention, developing their creativeness. Again, reality will shift and the negative things you wish not to see will disappear, will no longer be in your awareness and no longer in your reality. So shift your focus to what you want to see in others, in yourself. You must first take care of yourself. Focus inward and be the change you want to see. And as you focus and look outward, see the changes from inside appear in your reality. You are a creator. You create your reality. Everyone is a creator. We are all one. Why is it that we get so stuck 
in creating the wrong reality. Why is it so hard for humans to not be able to create more of a positive standpoint at times? It's the programming that's been constantly shown to you. How objects and things are important. Media showing how people should look. This is all programming. The programming needs dismantled. You are all you need because you are the creator. You do not need to look outside of yourself for validation or to have things or objects that media tells you you should have. It was a large plan implemented to bring down the frequency and vibration of humans. A fall, if you will. When you stop worrying about what others are saying or what others look like or have that you don't have shifts the focus internal on yourself and you will find you are all you need. Beautiful. Very good. So he has a question that sort of goes in line with what we're talking about. And he wanted to know, what do other light warriors need to know at, the, at this time to help them assist in preparing, building, creating, and beginning to heal themselves and heal others? What else do we need to know? What can you share? The most important first step is to heal yourself. Focus inward on yourself. When you heal yourself, it raises the vibration and frequency and heals others as well. By doing this and focusing inward, you can better assist others then by clearing and getting better energy flow for yourself. You can better help others. Stop worrying about what others will say about you or think about you. It does not matter. Be who you are. Live. Laugh. Love. Sit in your joy. Everything else just flows. Beautiful. And so one of the things that Tony and I have talked about quite a bit is these communities that we're going to have in the future. What can you share with us today about these communities, how they will look, anything specifically that he needs to know, building communities for the future? What can you share? He has trouble seeing this because you all were told that these communities 
do not work. It is not true. They do work. But you all are creating a community that will come together over time and expand. You and others like you are beacons that people will start to look towards. These communities will be assembled to help people heal themselves. Whatever they need to accomplish that will be provided in these communities. Even though right now it is in the virtual space, these communities continue to build these communities in the virtual space and eventually when the time is right, they will manifest in the physical. Just keep doing what you're doing. The right people will come in. And you will know when the time is right. Very good. And of course, us humans, we're always worried about the finance parts mm -hmm. of building anything. What can you tell us about how those financial resources will manifest when needed? They will just manifest as needed. When it is time, things will flow. flow. He always said a flood is coming. And the flood is two things, really. There will be a flood of souls seeking help and healing. And you and everyone like you are the beacons. The other flood is the flood of abundance as needed that is coming. Bless her so because humans always worry about this abundance. It always happens when needed at the right time. The flood of souls that need help and healing and protection is the most important part of this flood. So do not worry about the money for this earth realm is a money slave system designed to keep you worried about money. Shift your focus on money. Money is just a representation of energy exchange. It will come. So I had a group quantum healing hypnosis session a couple of weeks ago and Tony attended and during the session, he was asked if he gave permission to be taken on the ships for healing. And this is information that I've been receiving in other client sessions as well. 
We'd like to know a little bit more about his experience in that session. Was he taken on a ship for healing and what happened? He was asked if he would like to receive physical healing on the ship during the session by his other aspect of himself. And he said, yes, it happens fast, will not notice. In the physical, we take the physical body onto the ships to perform any healing that we need to do using harmonics, frequency, lights, occurs much faster than in the dense reality of Earth. So can you tell him a little bit about what he received during that time? What types of healing or upgrades did he experience? Multiple things occurred. The largest of which was working on the third eye energy center to activate some of his gifts. But with the combination of frequency and light and use of energy multiple areas on the body are and were healed. By rebalancing the physical vehicle, it allows it to heal faster. The colors, frequency, assist with the balance so healing can occur. Beautiful. So is this something that needs to be done on a repeating basis? Is this something that when someone gets it, it can heal the entire physical body? How does that work? It can heal the entire body in this dense reality. It sometimes might require to happen more often. Because of the environment that this vehicle is in causes trauma from the environment, chemicals, food, air, and water. So it can be used as often as needed when it is required. One of the things that we've talked about is safety and making sure that if a client is receiving this type of healing, that they're receiving it from a benevolent source. 
how is it that we know that they are being taken on a benevolent ship? How did they, how can they feel safe and secure about that process if they choose to do that? You call in your healing teams to surround you with the assistance of the angels and the clients as well. Trust your inner knowing that this is of a benevolent source. You are guided and protected. Do not worry, have no doubt. When you are performing this work, everyone is acting in the highest good for the client. Do not worry or fear. Your inner voice, inner knowing, is your guide. You know that if it does not feel right or makes you feel fearful or as you like to put it, icky, it is not for the highest good. Very good. So he wanted to know a little bit more about this experience. And when he was on the ship, he saw two dogs run past him. Who were these dogs? Any connection to him? Or did he just see them? They were your dogs on the ship. They were just present. No significance. They were just playing. Those are my dogs or his dogs? Yours. Heather's. <laughs> Heather's. I Heather's have, dogs. I have dogs on the ship. Yes. Oh, <laughs> very cool. And so there were also some people that were sitting at a table, looked like they were working on stuff. Who are those people that he saw? The other aspects. He knows these people. You were at this table. Kaz was at this table. Another male energy. Trouble identifying who this was. There was four at the table. They were working on things and discussing plans and strategy. He is asking why it was in a clinic setting as they were providing healing to his physical vehicle. They were discussing plans and strategy. Plans and strategy for healing for him? And assistance with we can do many things at the same time, providing plans and strategy for healing on his physical vehicle. Many others, also the protection and ascension of other humans and earth is a similar place to he would associate it with a medical bay on a ship or a base and those were various healers seated at the table so i know that i have an aspect that's on that ship and you said kaz 
also has an aspect that's on that ship. Does Tony also have an aspect on that same ship at this time? Yes. He sees his aspect often. He would like to see it in the physical, but that is not possible. And he said when he felt like he was being put back in his chair, he felt like it was me that helped to put him back. So was that that aspect of me that assisted him? Yes. You were there. You were facilitating the healing being done. That aspect. This physical aspect was facilitating the session. That's why it felt so familiar, because you are the same. Very good. So interesting. So fascinating. And so he also felt the sensation that someone was rubbing his foot. And we're wondering who that was and what was happening. Was there's a method of regrounding when we separate the physical rubbing the foot regrounds it back in the soul back into the body regrounds it back to this reality and earth. He was concerned because he thought he was flipping out of the chair. So (laughs) when the foot was rubbed, that is why he got concerned, because it put him back into the earth reality, the physical. So all was good. The being doing it was another healer don't know who they are they are from a different system Mm. blue blue skin Mm. cannot pronounce their name the language doesn't work very good so when this work is done And I've asked about this before, but I just want to verify, is this work always needed to be done in a hypnosis session when you're in a relaxed state? Or for instance, if I were to request to be taken on the ship, do I need to be in a relaxed state or can I simply just ask and allow it to be? It works best in hypnosis or deep meditation because The relaxed state is important. Most people cannot get into this relaxed state easy enough to be able to do it in the physical. A time will come when you will be able to without having to be in deep meditation or a hypnotic state as you train and progress, the time will come best right now in that relaxed state so that healing can occur. Very good. Very good. Is there anything else that you can share with us today or anything else we need to know to be able to assist our clients with this healing? They can ask for it, but the higher self will determine if they are ready before it occurs. Permission will be asked of the higher self, just like this one's permission was asked during session. You could set intention that if it was possible, that it occurs. And if it is the right time, 
and the client is ready, it can then occur. Beautiful. Thank you so much for all of that information. And so Tony and I definitely feel like we have a connection and I think we're both finding out we have a pretty strong Pleiadian connection. Do we know each other in the Pleiades? Do we work together or do we just come together to do this work in this lifetime? What can you share? Mm. Yes, very much so. You have worked with many others as well through multiple places, multiple times, multiple universes, multiple dimensions. Keep choosing to send the aspects to the earth realm to help in this physical denseness needed needed to to help people to heal and shift if we were not here in the physical we would not be able to help as many souls but you have been together for many many times it's like a team fairly large team that this is the mission to help and assist protect and heal Pallades is where you went to first for this training when you left source that was the first place that aspect of ourselves ascended to becoming higher dimensional and is able to assist them in other places and other realities. And you will continue to do this work. Very good. Thank you for that. So interesting. So after... After that group session, he experienced a a dizzy floating type of feeling for about a week or so. Was that because of that healing that he received or was anything else causing that? Hmm. It was from the upgrades. The physical body is, will continue to be upgraded as it heals. So you're able to use the gifts you already possess in this dense reality. This is part of the lesson to be able to use these gifts in this dense place and use them for good in a positive way. We have done this many millennia and some of these lifetimes we were influenced and used these gifts for malevolent reasons or were tricked into this. This time is different. So that lightness is the expansion of the body, the dizziness. It wasn't bad. It was a He describes it as a funny feeling. Mm. Is the expansion. So there's been a lot of talk lately, just going around in different places that there are light warriors that are being infiltrated by black magic being placed on them. What do we need to know about that at this time? 
this can only occur if you allow it. They try and try and try. They observe, trying to figure out how to do this on light warriors like yourselves. But as long as you remain as high frequency as you can and do not focus on this, they cannot touch you. They cannot do that. They do not have permission. This is the reason that they try to use fear and worry and things like addictions to get you in a lower vibrational state so that they could put it on you to keep you from sharing and healing and creating to slow ascension. But they, they cannot do that unless you allow them. Why is it that there are some people who seem to get attacked a lot by darker things and then there's others who don't? What's happening there? Depending on their mission or task, they do have more attempts at this. The he shines his light so bright that no one would dare do anything around him. And he tries to help other people like yourself and other healers and warriors to see the same that if we <laughs> act it's not even an act if we know that we are way so much more powerful than the ones that are trying to do these attacks when we realize this nothing can touch us they can try they can try but they will tire because you do not focus on them you know that you are powerful and what they think, what they say, and what they try to do will not affect you. Carry that big stick <laughs> or whatever you need to give you that confidence moving forward and they cannot do nothing to you. Wonderful. How can we assist others that are being greatly affected? What are some things that those of us that sort of have that awareness, how can we assist or, or help to clear the energy of others that are being attacked? By maintaining your energy flow and being able to use energy to assist with clearing others' fields help. Also, shining your light, walking your path in love 
helps to guide them. And they want to be in your presence and do like you do. That helps them see where they need to improve and fix and bring awareness and highlight the areas that need improvement. Very good. Very good. He's been feeling like he just doesn't want to wear shoes anymore. He wants to walk around barefoot on that ground. Tell him a little bit more about how a person can benefit from being barefoot on Mother Gaia. As we showed him in another session, the same aspect that was shown today, where it was important for that aspect to get on the earth and reground. That is why he doesn't like to wear shoes anymore to ground constantly. When we make that connection with the earth, we help the body heal. We help everything heal. We help the earth heal. We help raise the vibration in all beings by opening up that communication and flow of energy it is also like acupuncture for the earth. We help to bring in energy to the earth as well. It speeds up the healing process in our bodies. That constant connection and energy flow it is important. He is trying to says he has tender feet <laughs> trying to build them up so he can be in constant connection so he wanted to know angela experienced a lifetime in a session that he did with her where this red dragon came into the scene and this red dragon was very upset because Angela had left it. Can you tell him a little bit more about what that scene was all about? Who that dragon is? What does he need to know? The dragon to his wife represents her spiritual magical healer side the dragon was upset because she forgot about him by getting away from that connection with the dragon she lost her way a bit but is slowly moving back there. She is very powerful and has the red dragon. The red dragon is physical as well, but it is a representation of that witchy, magical, healing energy that she used to know she had but lost dragons assist us in many ways although we cannot see them in the physical in this realm anymore because of humans fall they were here to help assist us. We 
use them as part of the team. They are our counterparts. They help us and assist us. This is why every culture in this earth realm was always trying to portray the dragon as an evil or a bad being. There are, just like humans, a benevolent dragons and benevolent dragons just depends on which path they choose. But we all have a connection to a dragon and that dragon energy. And they assist us in numerous ways throughout the eons, accomplishing missions and tasks. This dragon, which appeared to her in a session, is that representation and that reminder that she needs to find this part of herself, this aspect, this friend, again. And when she does, she will know for herself how this dragon is doing. She needs to know that this dragon is okay, and it is. There is nothing that can affect us beings. It's just waiting for her to find her way back again. Beautiful. Very good. Are there any final messages today? Anything else that you'd like to bring through and share with us today? Keep doing what you're doing, shift your focus from where they are trying to divert your attention to the place that you would like it to become, which then starts creating your reality where you focus, what you focus most on what you set your intentions on is what manifests into your reality. So start changing it into what you want to see. That is all. Very good. Thank you for that. May I ask who all we've been speaking with in today's session? The aspect of himself that is on the Palladian ships, also Archangel Michael, which are the higher aspects of this one in this reality. Beautiful. I'd like to just say we are so grateful to these beautiful beings, to Archangel Michael for joining us today in this session. Thank you so much for all of the information that you've brought through and the healing that you've provided today.